Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, I rise uh, this morning to speak on uh, Bill C-16, uh, an act to amend the Canadian Human Rights Act by expressly including uh, gender identity and expression as prohibited grounds for discrimination under the Canadian Human Rights Act. Uh, let, let me say at the outset that over the last number of years, there has been increased awareness about issues uh, concerning transgendered Canadians. And as a result of that increased awareness, there is greater understanding and sensitivity to transgendered persons. Uh, there is no doubt, Madam Speaker, that it wasn't long ago uh, in Canada that it was difficult to be transgendered. And I would submit, Madam Speaker, that there are many, many challenges that transgendered uh, Canadians face today. And uh, quite frankly, I think that the vast, vast majority of Canadians stand in opposition to discrimination against transgendered persons. I can say, Madam Speaker, that I certainly oppose discrimination against transgendered persons. And, and so in the context and in the spirit of opposition towards discrimination against transgendered Canadians, I support the underlying intention behind Bill C-16. Uh, that being said, while I support the underlying intention of Bill C-16 and will in fact be supporting Bill C-16 so that it can at least get to committee, uh, I, I would acknowledge uh, that there are legitimate questions about whether Bill C-16 uh, is necessary from a legal standpoint. And I want to emphasize from a legal standpoint because I'm not suggesting uh, and I'm not talking about uh, discrimination against transgendered persons because I think we are all uh, opposed to that. But Rather, I'm talking about more broadly uh, whether Bill C-16 adds anything substantively at law uh, to protect transgendered Canadians. And I, I would suggest that the answer to that is likely not. Uh, Madam Speaker, uh, sex and sexual orientation are prohibited grounds uh, of discrimination under the Canadian Human Rights Act and under various uh, provincial human rights codes. Uh, sex and sexual orientation have been uh, broadly interpreted, broadly interpreted by the Canadian Human Rights Tribunal, uh, broadly interpreted by provincial human rights commissions, and broadly interpreted by the courts. Uh, as a result of that broad interpretation, uh, today in Canada, discriminating against transgendered Canadians constitutes a prohibited ground of discrimination under the Canadian Human Rights Act. So uh, in that regard, Madam Speaker, Bill C-16 doesn't add anything, it doesn't take anything away, uh, really, at law, it maintains the status quo. Uh, the fact that transgendered Canadians are protected under the Canadian Human Rights Act is demonstrated by uh, a number of decisions from the uh, Canadian Human Rights Tribunal. Uh, when, I, when I speak of decisions from the Canadian Human Rights Tribunal, I'm talking about Kavanaugh and the Correctional Services of Canada case. I'm talking about Montreux and the Canadian National Bank case. I'm talking about Montreux and the uh, Canadian Forces case. Uh, I'm talking about the Nixon case out of the British Columbia Court of Appeal that upheld a ruling of the uh, British Columbia Human Rights Commission in 2005. Uh, in the three uh, human rights, uh, Canadian Human Rights Tribunal cases, all three cases uh, dealt with uh, alleged discrimination on the basis of uh, gender identity. All of the cases were uh, in the context of federally uh, regulated workplaces and, and therefore engaged uh, the Canadian Human Rights Act. And in all three cases, 
the uh, Canadian Human Rights uh, Tribunal uh, determined that uh, sex, uh, which constitutes a prohibited ground of discrimination under the Canadian Human Rights Act, uh, included transgendered Canadians. And so, as I say, Bill C-16 does not really add anything substantively at law. Therefore, it begs the question, what does Bill C-16 actually do? Well, Madam Speaker, I would suggest that Bill C-16 is symbolic, and I recognize that that is important to a number of people. Uh, I, I certainly know that for some in the transgendered community, they would say that words have meaning, and they take comfort by the expressed uh, inclusion of gender identity and expression in the Canadian Human Rights Act. And, and so I acknowledge that. But, I, but while I acknowledge it and, and am sympathetic to it, uh, I, I would also state that uh, legislating on the basis of symbolism is not a good way of going about crafting legislation. And what's more, I would submit, Madam Speaker, that Bill C-16 is frankly inconsistent with the way that human rights legislation has been drafted uh, across Canada. Uh, human rights legislation, in terms of the broad pro uh, prohibited grounds of discrimination, are, are crafted uh, broadly. They are broad terms. We, we we're talking about <coughs> prohibited grounds such as uh, sex and sexual orientation, which uh, I've already discussed, uh, age, uh, disability, race, and ethnicity. Uh, there are many groups and subgroups that could fit into any one of those uh, expansive terms. But we do not list every single group or subgroup. Uh, we don't do that because it would be impractical to do so. It, it would be legally unnecessary to do so because those uh, groups and subgroups are already protected by those broad categories. And, Madam Speaker, in some cases it might even be legally uh, uh, problematic uh, with there being potentially unintended consequences to, uh, go, you know, creating a laundry list of various groups. So, again, Bill C-16 uh, is not consistent in that regard uh, in terms of how uh, human rights legislation has, has been drafted. That being said, uh, Madam Speaker, uh, I, I reiterate my earlier point that there are uh, many in the transgender community who say that uh, this would be meaningful to them. And uh, from the standpoint that I uh, oppose discrimination against transgender ca Canadians, and to the degree that it, uh, the inclusion of gender identity and expression would remove any ambiguity that it potentially exists, and I don't believe there is any ambiguity, but, it, but to the degree that there is, uh, I, Madam Speaker, am prepared to support Bill C-16 because I support Bill C-16 in principle so that we can get it to committee. Uh, and as a member of the uh, Justice and Human Rights Committee, I, I look forward to the opportunity to look uh, more closely at, at Bill C-16 when it gets to committee stage. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Questions and comments, questions et commentaires. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Government House Leader. Thank you, uh, Madam Speaker. I appreciate the comments made by the, the member. And I thought it was interesting. He talked about the underlying intentions of Bill C-16 as being something in which he, representing the Conservative Party, uh, could uh, appreciate and, uh, and understand why it's important um, that that sense of commitment on that issue uh, is so critically important. And my question to the member is, is that, uh, and he somewhat makes reference to it, he talks about symbolism. Um, I would argue, and uh, the minister who spoke before him uh, put forward, I thought, a very strong case that this is more than just symbolism. 
And if the member, uh, and I understood that he said that the Conservatives would in fact be supporting the bill passing to committee stage, and I applaud that uh, as the member. And the question I have uh, for the member is, is that if he believes that this legislation goes beyond symbolism, does he then see uh, himself and the Conservative Party then supporting it going through uh, both the committee and third reading? The Honourable uh, Member for St. Albert Edmonton. Uh, well, I thank uh, the Parliamentary Secretary to the Government House Leader for the question. Let me just clarify that uh, on our side there will be a, a free vote uh, and, uh, and members will have an opportunity to look at the bill and, and make a, a decision. Uh, but on the broad question of whether Conservatives uh, oppose discrimination against transgendered persons, I can say that Conservatives are united in our opposition to discrimination, as are the vast majority uh, of Canadians. Uh, I uh, believe that the, the bill is well-intentioned, but uh, it's important that there be careful study and review. And I understand there has been, uh, this has been debated before, but we need to look very carefully at, at the bill and what all of the implications of the bill would be to make sure that, uh, in fact, it does what the minister says it will do and that there are not any unintended consequences. I certainly have heard from members of the transgender community who have spoken in strong support of this uh, legislation, and I take uh, their sentiments very seriously, which is why I want to support this bill so we can get it to committee stage for further study and review. Questions and comments? Questions and commentaires? The Honourable Member for um, Esquimalt Senate Souk. Sorry. Thank you <laughs> very much, Madam Speaker. I want to thank the member for his uh, speech in support of the bill in principle, uh, and I, I do respect the sincerity with which he's offered his comments. Uh, he's made the argument that the bill is, is really unnecessary, that which we've heard uh, each time it's come before the House. And I wonder whether he's familiar with the position of the Canadian Human Rights Commission and the Canadian Human Rights Tribunal, which have both said repeatedly that there are gaps in the current legislation and that there are good legal reasons for uh, amending the criminal code, hate crime section, and the Canadian Human Rights Code to make sure that uh, transgender Canadians are explicitly covered. So there are, there are those legal arguments they have both made. Uh, he also says that um, doing things symbolically in the criminal code is, is not a good idea. However, uh, the previous Conservative government spent a lot of time saying it was important for the criminal code to denounce unacceptable behavior in our society. And I would submit that this bill is very similar to lots of the legislation introduced by the previous government, which sought to label certain behavior as not acceptable in our society. The Honourable Member for St. Albert Edmonton. Uh, thank, thank you, Madam Speaker. And I want to uh, thank the member for his climal, Juan de Fuca, uh, Souk, for the question and for his leadership uh, on this, uh, this issue. Uh, certainly the question of, of gaps under the criminal code is, uh, and in, in terms of existing law, is something that the Justice Committee will have to study very carefully. Uh, but based upon my review of uh, the cases that have been uh, adjudicated by the Canadian Human Rights Tribunal and, and cases that have gone to uh, levels of court across the country, including the British Columbia Court of Appeal, I believe that the existing language uh, does protect transgendered Canadians. But, but certainly the question of potential gaps is something that the Justice Committee will have to look at uh, very closely uh, should the legislation pass, which I anticipate that it will. Resuming debate, 